We have some shirts Those on our shirts faces. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again to the TI Hot Tub. Uh, TI Hot Tub, is that what it was? I believe that it was. TI Time Machine. And we are finally finishing off what was a hundred and some odd hours of Dota 2 content around the clock, beyond the summit. And of course, the TI 7 qualifiers. Lumi, Lyrical, Draskal, Break Your CPK. How you guys doing? Uh, we had a hell of a match in the last one for the China qualifiers. What do you guys think about LGD? They're they're going to be feeling good. They're they're going to be feeling good and going into this one. You know how much we like that Dota psychology to talk about. So oh yeah, I got to think that they're going to be riding this wave. Of, no, um, they again they were the expected team. I think in a lot of people's minds. I, I know I voted them first. I know a lot of people out there that I talked to did. Obviously, they haven't done that, and now here they are on the brink of what was, you know, being eliminated possibly, but they came through in an epic way in that second game especially. So they got a tough opponent here, though, in Ehome Keen, which has definitely proven to be uh, maybe sliding under, under the radar a little bit. So I'm, I'm feeling like uh, I'm on the break of train here. LGD probably feeling pretty good. They 2 owed you know. That's yeah. always nice because one thing, it's it's about having the, the morale, being like, okay, yeah, we 2 owed let's get into the finals, but it's also about having a lesser amount of total games that you have to play. Because you have to imagine in the last day, especially with the grand finals, you have that point where you can be like mentally exhausted after having played so many games. So I think it's actually a big benefit to go through the lower bracket and just kind of like, they didn't stomp necessarily in the second game, but they won, you know, and it was convincing enough, I think, to, to make them feel pretty good. So looking forward to the game. I haven't really been able to cover any of the China actual qualifying games because I've been covering like EU, CIS, and C, but excited to see what they bring. Yeah. Lumi, you got a chance to cast that game as well. Uh, we saw some pretty great Storm Spirit play out of maybe. It was kind of a little bit shaky in there in the early stages, and I think that he actually zipped into a chrono like three separate times, but <laughs> he ended up carrying them at the end. Do you think that this is the, the player to watch? Everybody seems to talk about him. Old Eleven also, though, is pretty amazing. Yao has been playing pretty great as well. Who do you feel like is that standout player on the LGD squad? I think LGD traditionally has been a team that just outskills you. Uh, pretty much in every single position. So I, at times, like, you know, the, the coordination wasn't there, right? Where you have people zipping into Chrono yeah. and stuff missing up. But when they do come together, I think they are probably the highest skilled individual team in China. Um, whereas I feel like Ehom Keen on the other side is very different. It's a team that they've been very uh, playing together for a long time now. And this is kind of their break. So kind of the dichotomy of individual skill versus teamwork. We'll see how that turns out. Totally. And that's the thing, too, that you look at the Sea Home Keen team, they have some very mechanically skilled players. Uh, she, 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 I believe is how you pronounce it. <laughs> I might be doing a little bit of a, a, a big up that word, but um, he's a 9K player. He's incredibly strong. Who isn't a 9K player nowadays? Oh, well, geez. but Lots in China, people. that's I the bet thing, not too, though, right? Player, apparently. Oh, that's true. Oh, snap. He's 10K. That's true. It's yeah, better. It's, it's better. Even, even better. Yeah. yeah, new 9K is trash now. Is that what you're saying, Lumi? That well, he's not. He's 10K in NA, so what does that really mean? That's fair. That's I mean, true. it means that he 3 0 the grand finals. Mm -hmm. That's what it means. You know what? Just coming in with the greatest point of all, Draskal. Uh. So <laughs> that's the thing, though, too, that we should talk about is LGD in the past about two or three months, they have not been able to finish off in the qualifiers. They got knocked out of three separate LAN competitions That's right, yeah. in a space of four days uh, and two of them by LFY actually their their sister squad so they're a team that's very strong, but they also end up struggling occasionally when it comes down to clutch time uh, and, and not to necessarily go, like we said, too much Dota 2 psychologist, but Ehom Keen certainly another team that is maybe coming in a little bit of a dark horse. Especially for Valve event, I think LGD has a very bad history. I think there was one, I want to say Boston or maybe last TI where they were perfect in the group stage, and then they just lost two matches in a row. Playoff time came. Uh, unfortunately for them, they didn't have the whole. If you if you win top in your group, you directly qualify. Maybe wasn't they that like TI three that happened? They went like all the way through the. Yeah, other there bracket, was that too. Like, and then they they lost. This always happens with LGD. I hope this bad luck streak, I guess, has ran out and. I think they should qualify, but Ehome Keaton has been looking pretty good. You don't want these newcomers to come through and. Go to TI7 as a result. I mean, I'm an know. old dog, right? So, But I mean, on the other hand, look at what's going on in the other regions. You've got Execration. They beat out Faceless. Uh, you have Planet, Planet Dogs. Dog. They're able to Rats. knock out a lot of the, you know, the old guard as well. It's spooky stuff if you're one of these old-time things. And maybe this is sort of one of those little microcosms of the same type of situation. I was talking to somebody earlier, and they're like, the TI this year is going to look so much different than it has other years because there's so many new teams that have stepped up to the plate. 
And I, I think the, the Chinese qualifier as well is like the, the closest one in regards to overall skill. Whereas even going back far to the group stage, like, what, there's like a five or six way tie at one point or something like that. Yeah. So I think it kind of speaks volumes about how much competitiveness is breeded in the Chinese scene. So it's not really surprising to see necessarily an up-and-coming team in this particular region. I think it was more surprising to see Planet Dog, who uh, played through the EU qualifiers, kind of take the victory over Maus or old Ad Venom. But yeah, I think that we're going to see... Even even going as far as to say that in regards to the Chinese like relative skill of their teams, going into TI, whoever qualifies here, I still think is closer in, in like, skill value to the invite <coughs> teams than the other regions. Yeah, That's how I feel. I would agree. I still think that they're a little bit below the teams like the Liquids or yeah, the OGs. Yeah. But it's it's not as big of a gap, I right. feel, after having watched the other regions. Something else that we really have to keep in mind here, by the way, is that, if I'm not mistaken, you could double check if you want, but I believe e Home Keem beat LGD in the playoffs already. Yeah. So I that's why LGD is even down in the, in the loose bracket in the first place. So that just happened yesterday. That's something else to keep in mind. Oh, look at this guy. Wonderful. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. We got um, more uh, more action. You know, I've actually, I've probably uh, had more monster during this hub than any other time in my life. I, the, they I, got the low carb ones I now. I think you had <laughs> too much monster. Can I say that on stream? No, you can't. Um, so Definitely well, not. So there is a thing where it's like, uh, <laughs> you shouldn't drink too much of it, right? Like, I think it says on the can. Yeah, maybe. I've never read the can. Well, so. we well, are now Grant into has the definitely key. never read the can either. I can tell you that much. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Grant just has like a shotgun method for Monster now, where he just drinks like two or three. Don't of them do at that at home, kids. Probably. He's a professional trained by yeah. Monster Energy for Monster Energy. That's right. Well, we're into and the draft. To <laughs> answer your question, Bricky, <laughs> yes, they did 2-0 uh, LGD yesterday. Yeah. So, perhaps a little bit of revenge for LGD uh, coming into this set. You know, that's, that's what they're going to be thinking here. You know, so I, right off the bat here, we see the Beastmaster ban. And now, honestly, I'm blanking on if we had that ban in the last series or not. But that was another hero that, when we were doing a little bit of research before that series, of we saw a lot of Beastmaster in the group stages, specifically out of LGD. Uh, Shadow Shaman Rasta, he was also the other one that we happen to see quite a bit of. So wondering if, uh, obviously, with the ban on Beastmaster, but Shadow Shaman is still something I would possibly look for here. Both teams played a lot. Uh, and I think now it's still okay for LGD. You obviously aren't going to be taking it for e Home Keen because you have a Warlock, which is sort of doubling up on the same type of thing. Mm. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't mind it, certainly. It fits that style of play. And Batrider first. Um, this seems to be a e Home Keen specific ban towards LGD because VG did not ban it out <coughs> last game. Okay. Last two games. But uh, even extending back to the series yesterday, these were the same ban, e Home Keen. Evidently scared of a Beastmaster from Old Chicken. Or Old Eleven, sorry. There's so many old people. They're so, yeah. We're all getting old. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Not me. Warlock Earthshaker, Wombo Combo, as I like to say. It's a very interesting opening. A lot different than the other regions. I mean, the heroes themselves definitely saw some play. But just, you know, Shaker for EU, an example, was like a second phase pick or maybe even sometimes a last pick. Just a different, I guess, priority for the, the Chinese region. And then yep. I like the bat, uh, obviously protected by banning the Knicks in the first phase. They'll also be able to take out anything else if they want. Uh, we've, we saw some Ten Legion and Oracle remaining. in other regions as a counter to bat. I'm not sure if the, the Chinese teams have been Five liking that hero remaining. as much. Yep. The one the one hero that's uh, really missing from the China region is the lack of Io. We don't yeah, see that in the first true. phase. Io is, first is generally phase. A, a counter pick to the bat rider if you want to think about it that way. Um, but yeah. Dan and Lena. Lena, oh, we already talked about the last series. Lena's a hero that is non existent in some games in uh, in China. And we see right here, not banned, not picked so far. So, so Lumi, I guess since you've been covering this region the most, uh, this, this is a question for you. Um, the, the mid, I think, in the other regions is what people were prioritizing the most. Yep. And they would like first pick Queen, and then they would pick another hero that can help like two two v two the mid lane. And they put a lot of emphasis on making sure that their mid mechanical players get really far ahead. It doesn't seem to really be the same here. It's more about maybe last picking the mid, and and maybe a bit more of an afterthought and trying to have stronger lanes. Is that I, accurate I, or? They still do the two v two mid, although okay. maybe a little bit less. I think one of the games that Breaky and I cast it, we saw like the whole Ricky bounty just yeah. nonstop running mid. So. Uh, Instead of being in the lane, I feel like they focus a little bit more about like sniping Radiant's couriers. And one thing I do uh, for sure know that they focus more on stacks. 
One thing I've noticed from the, let's say, NA region or C region, yes, they, they do spend like the two, three minutes mid harassing the opposing mid, but then like just forget about stacking. Whereas the support here, they do less of the harassing, but then they make sure even if they mid falls behind, they, they like, you know, Storm just goes to the jungle and grabs a quick six because yeah. of the stacks that, that are available to them. So you've been saying like, I guess Lina, Storm, heroes like that are the ones who are mainly benefiting from that kind of thing? Or do they pick Shadow safe laners teams. that can farm stacks as well? Yes. Well, somebody could farm the stack, right? right? So to answer your question, they still help the mid, but in a different way. They, they help, help it in a more passive way by pulling stacks or, okay. or accruing stacks. Wow, this is a very different styles of draft here. So you got yeah. Ehome Keen going for like the team fight, kill you all, and LGD with the Terrorblade most importantly like barreling down towers and Batrider there to just make it a four on five. This feels like a very aggressive lineup from LGD. They definitely want to push the pace. Yeah. You don't pick heroes like, uh, I, I'm guessing it's roaming Kunkka and then, you know, obviously bat off with Terrorblade. You have very early push potential. I don't think that Ehome Keen's heroes are great at wave clear at all until a little bit later on into the game. Like OD is all right. Fatal Bond's not bad. Yeah, but you don't really want to Fatal Bond's a creep wave, right? It just doesn't feel yeah. good, I guess, is a, a mechanic to push out the waves. So LGD may be looking to abuse that a little bit, but I will say that later on, OD is great against Terrorblade. You yes. basically one-shot his yeah. illusions, and you can obviously use Astral Imprisonment as a counter against Kunkka or Batrider. It's a really good save. I like that pick quite a bit. And even though he's not quite as strong in lane as he used to be, he still should be able to do okay against some of the more prominent I, I think this is a terrible Terrorblade pick into the OD for all the reasons you mentioned. And plus one, because you know, terribly, you want to s relatively sit at low HP and then Sunder, but then, like, Sanity's Eclipse could just take you from 80% to zero. But this game, I think it's more about the Dazzle having the sustain, and then you have the Terrorblade hit meta, kind of similar to what everyone else does when they play the hero. You just hit seven, you get the tier ones. Every time you, your meta's up, you know, you TP, you kill a tier one, you TP, you kill a tier one. At that point of the game, I don't think the OD really counters the Terrorblade. I think sure, it's, it's I'm talking about the, the base defense, the base siege. Th yeah, that's the high where ground. I think Terrorblade perhaps will struggle a little bit against OD. Yeah, of course, <coughs> I agree there. It kind of depends, I guess, also on how much gets done in that early stage. If they can take all the tier Ten twos down and you remain. end up having an item advantage over the OD, then I don't know if it's going to end up Five mattering as much. It kind of depends on if it goes the way that LGD want it to early. Mm -hmm. And Puck is certainly a hero that can make those rotations He's early, find kills on the side lanes if there's an overextension trying to kill that Terrorblade. Could be rough. So last pick carry here for Ehome. No CK. Been seeing a lot more of that hero recently. Yeah, so I'm in the previous series right there. Uh, Anti-Mage comes to mind for me for oh, Ehome. Oh, Anti-Mage is really slow against this lineup. Too slow, you think? Okay. The Terra Blade is really great at punishing heroes who need like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Because you, you want to hit that Battle Fury Manta timing. Okay. If you have a, a good game, it's at like 20 minutes. If you have an okay game, it's like anywhere from 23 to 25. Later than that, you run the risk of just getting pushed down before you're really capable of fighting. So what I'm thinking with with this lineup, though, is something that very 4-1 strategy. That very, you know, Warlock, or Shaker Slaughter, OD, they're going to be able to get kills, even engage team fights to an extent, where you had that one hero just farming. That's why I was going maybe with the AM route, but as you suggest, yeah, that hero specifically wouldn't work. Is there another one then? I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't mind Sven. They don't really have heroes that really utilize the jungle that well. Like Lumi was saying, there's a lot more emphasis on you know stacking for heroes. Okay, so something else that offers wave huh. clear. Uh, it's going to be a safe lane Ember, I would guess. Yes. And then they're just going to have the, the OD <coughs> mid. So Ember is a, is a oh. good solution, again, to the illusions. Whoa, ho hold up a minute. ZZZ is normally their off lane player, I want to say? Let me no, double check on him. I think he's actually, you know, he is their position one. Yeah, he switches it up. Oh, no, okay, my bad, my bad. Yeah. You're right, you're right. So Ember is really good because he offers the team something that they didn't have before, which is why I also suggested Sven, is the, the ability to clear waves. Yep. And he's also very hard to catch. So natural Lincoln's builder as well. It'll be nice during the, the early mid game when you're trying to push and, and gather up as LGD, this hero will be able to be on some other part of the map. You know, he buys his boots of travel. He can also assist in the early game fights. High magical damage is great against Terrorblade early game because he has high armor, but he has really low health. So I, I, I like the pick quite a bit. All right, well, you like the pick. Do you like the draft? LGD or Ehome Keen? What are you two thinking? I, I like Ehome for this game. Ehome Keen for me as well, mainly off of what Drasko was saying. Again, the idea of the 4 1 strategy to an extent, but it just also the, the wombo combo is going to go back to the idea of the team fight's really strong here on the side of Ehome Keen. And plus, they had that psych psychology advantage of going 2 <laughs> 0 over Wonderful. them yesterday. So. Okay, glorious. All right, well, we're getting ready to hop into this game. Lumi, do you, do you agree in? You, you picking up what they're putting down? You feeling it? 
this game is going to be defined by the mids, in my opinion. Uh, on one side, OD has a lot of pressure on him. He's the one that's supposed to be defending uh, the high ground against the Terror Blade. He needs to want to break up the x torn combo. On the other side, maybe Puck needs to be getting his Raining Rift on point to actually ensure these kills on Ember, on, on the uh, OD and whatnot. So, uh, can I do a cop-out answer and say, can I watch the mid lane <laughs> you for gotta, five You minutes? gotta pick a team, man. Who do you think I, I, I really think this draft is even. I think both teams can win it. Dude, the if you yeah, make me choose maybe. one, if but, make but me they're choose saying one. an opinion. It's what, what your right. opinion is. LG is going to win it because I think maybe he's going to just be the better player in the clutch. Okay. All right. Well, thank Good you answer. guys again so much. We're going to hop into this one. As it looks like early movement out, they are going to spot old 11 smoke. Going to break a little bit of a hey, how you doing? Thought about the stun, but not going to throw it out there. <laughs> and that might signal that there's a ward over in this area. We'll see if LGD are able to get the D ward as Batrider does have one on him. But we'll have to watch that mid very closely and see. I mean, is there any heroes that are going to be able to rotate really towards mid to try and alleviate that tension? Uh, Warlock's not really the best. I guess Kunkka would probably be the main one from LGD. Um, it's Slaughter. Because okay. especially if uh, your mid player gets to walk in and set up an Astral, that's four seconds for your Slaughter to walk in to set up yet another stun. With that said, though, Puck, if he has Orb seconds. or Face available, should be able to dodge that. So. Um, I, I think we're going to see more of a 1v1, and if, you, if the supports do come in and out of the lane, it, it won't provide too much help. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's the, the thing, too. Um, we did end up getting two D wards here, so LGD able to take away the ward in their lane, and also Ehum Keen able to take away the one that wasn't actually blocking out the camp, but they still knew where it was. Yep. So no vision down there, but there is one mid. That should give a little bit of help to the OD. All right, so quickly point out the some of these Chinese characters for Ehum Keen, because I, I guess they're not as known as the LGD players. The mid player, it translates to something like bright or fluorescent. Okay. So I, I don't know if you want to go with that. And then uh, uh, Slaughter's name uh, translates to Eloquent. Eloquent. Yeah. What a name. Not a, not a Dota name that you see too often, right? It's almost like lyrical. That's that <laughs> is. <Yeah. laughs> All right, he's my new favorite player. Um, maybe in the mid here, he ended up changing up his name also. Uh, for anybody that's wondering, it is indeed the Puck. And Bright is just going to keep the pressure on him. Here is already getting kind of aggressive early on, setting the tempo. Ooh. Gets the two last hit and the tower, or uh, the last hit deny on the range creep. He is dominating over this OD right now. Oh, and looks like Victoria trying to pull him past. They are going to end up connecting with the torrent, so Mr. Eloquent won't quite be able to get Victoria out of there. Are they pulling the whole creep wave mid to get a Yo, double wave that for is him? the play, man. That Experience. is super cool. Yeah. You know, I did that once uh, in a pub. I sent my Lone Druid Bear to an other lane and just stole my Curious Creep Wave. He wasn't very happy, but <laughs> obviously they know about it here. Uh, the bottom lane, the Batrider, will suffer a little bit in terms of experience, but I think Puck is one of the heroes that would not mind at all to get that quick, quicker level 6. That's insane. Yeah. Um, Old Eleven is a you know a playmaking hero, and I guess he is sometimes known for getting a lot done with very little. Um, but that extra little bit of experience, how much do you think that's going to help maybe in this lane? Quite a bit, especially since he's getting uh, more denies over the OD. Now, I don't think these extra bit of experience will translate a solo kill later on, but it will mean a faster blink dagger or uh, you know bail discord. Old Eleven going to be forced to use the Firefly now. Maybe waited a little bit long for it, but we'll still be fine in the end. It does have a salve to boot after the Shadow Word wears off. Yep. And we can see already a little bit of that change. It's almost a full level ahead. Uh, granted, that is with this big creep wave going under yeah, the he, tower. Yeah, he, he should be coming back. One thing I like to see Kunkka player doing a little bit more is actually using your torrent to stack camps as you're stacking yet another camp. Especially in this particular scenario, if you're stacking for Batrider, you could really get the economic game going. It is a little bit tricky to get the timing off, especially if you're not used to it, but these are professionals. I believe in them. I'm sure I'll be able to get it done. It is a little bit of a less seen characteristic of the hero, yes. I believe. There's some. Oh, is he doing another one? He's pulling another pass. Is it going mid or is it going bottom? I'm sure he's going mid. Like, Victoria just wants to keep maybe stacked up here in the mid lane and wrong. He doesn't <laughs> know what to do. The other thing that's no, nice no, about no, this it's is it's bottom. also. It's going bottom. Well, it's also denying Wrong's ability to get the pull off. That's the other big thing that happens here. Uh, he could he could pull this camp. 
right? The, the bigger camp and well, just deny. No, but it's a whole wave that I isn't deniable because of that. All right, Victoria, where are you going with that wave? He is doing the... He's trying Please to don't it. die here, Victoria. <laughs> Please do not. Okay. He's fine. He's got the creep wave coming. Yeah, he's going to be good. He's all Are you sure down. that one creep is... It's <laughs> getting in. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. He's pulling for himself. The Batrider is not getting here to experience. Yeah, Batrider instead is going to come and contest for these stacks. And old 11 able to get it. So a very interesting use like of the resources. I actually really yeah. like this a lot. It's Even if it doesn't end up making the biggest... Oh, we're looking at that. It ends up getting a solo kill on maybe. That is terrible. Yeah. I didn't watch how that happened, but it looks like Puck just committed for a kill, and he did not have simple calculus and uh, misjudged it by, like, 90 HP or so. Okay. Well, early on, it's a little bit of an advantage into the favor of LGD. Nothing super significant, but we'll have to see how well this Kunkka is able to make use of the early farm that he's gotten. Already level 3 is uh, just right on even with old 11 on the Batrider. The problem with Victoria is that even though he's got this early start, he's got the early levels, there isn't a really good lane that he could gank into. Bottom is ungankable because they're not strong enough to fight there. I don't think they could gank the uh, the old D mid because of Astro. You know what they might try and do is bring maybe into the bottom lane when he gets six and yeah. try and find a kill with that. That That's probably the best look that they could do. Um, although they could maybe catch the silence onto OD, which would make the difference. That's for sure. But I think that it's going to be very key that maybe makes a rotation and groups up together with the Kunkka to find a kill. Because like you said, Kunkka can't do it alone. So a little bit of a pause now. Lumi, do you think that in spite of that solo kill on the puck, LGD are still feeling okay with the state of the game? Or do you think that they're not entirely happy? I don't think a solo kill should have ever happened. But like I mentioned, uh, they were essentially dueling to the death, right? Like, they both committed. He orbed it forward and everything. He misjudged, and that could happen. But it does impact the lane Whoa. quite a bit. He doesn't have a point in phase shift. What is there to phase shift? An orb? Does he have orb yet? Yeah, he has an orb. I guess so, but it's like just having the... I, I think he okay. committed the, the nuke there to get the kill, right, earlier? Okay. Um, I mean, you're not phase shifting like a dragon slave in That's comparison, fair. right? Or a screen of pain, so... Yes, there is something to face ship, but nothing like huge. Yeah, I guess that's fair enough. Well, again, old 11 just being a nuisance in this lane. There is more pausing coming out, I'm sure. Uh, every now and then you get these little hiccups in the servers, but that will soon be resolved, I'm sure. It's interesting to me that they talk in, in like, not Chinese about lag and stuff. No, they, they said Ka earlier today. Yeah, or early just now. Chinese people do speak English. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Although I'm not personally a strong example of that. <laughs> other Chinese people speak English. Oh, Lumi, what a guy. All right, level four on the Ember. Victoria is down here, ready to maybe make something happen. And maybe, speaking of which, does have that level six, but no TP. So any rotation in here won't end up happening until that gets delivered. And I think they're waiting for the orb to come out, and as soon as he sees that, he's going to walk into Astro, and then Slaughter would try to set up for a kill. And OD, I think he picked up the fact that there is no phase, yeah. so the kill is possible. But of course, this ward has spotted the rotation of the Slaughter on the bottom half of the map, so uh, he was very aware that the skank attempts him. And they also drop down this ward, which should signal that there is a ward in the area. Let's see if LGD are able to get that D ward in a few. Regen rune up at the top. Maybe he's going to go check that one. Be very content with himself and maybe even think about taking a play up here on the top lane onto dark. Yeah, that regen rune was actually very important. You can see that he doesn't have the bottle because he opted for boots and the magic wand. That's a lot of early game item commitments, but should pay for it very easily here. The coil commits. The break should get the kill. And unfortunately, they don't have metamorphosis to transition into a quick tower push, but with the, uh, the Bugatti here, they should be able to take it regardless. Yeah, it's a lot of damage regardless. And the illusions, the right clicks, it's all there. Bottom lane, battles ensuing. They're going to be able to TP away just barely there on the Ember Spirit. So the three-person rotation came in. X had already been used. Yeah, you can see that despite O11 essentially lost two waves, 
He's actually very well leveled because uh, Victoria has been helping him out by a, a couple of stacks in the jungle. And he's actually going to get level 6. And he's uh, actually going to skip the drums that you normally see in the offlane Batrider straight into the blink. I think this kind of accelerated timing might uh, surprise Ehom Keen a little bit. I think the idea that they have here is the same type of thing as we saw before, as we got a little bit of Kale. Uh, is, since Victoria is going to have level 6 at around that 10 minute mark with the Tome, I would imagine that they can actually find kills with the Blink, and that's the big difference maker, right? You usually see the drums because the rest of your team isn't able to follow up for a kill, but now having the phage, or having uh, the Coil as well as Boat by that 10 minute mark when he's going to finish off his Blink Dagger, it's going to be really effective. I think the other huge thing uh, with this item difference, uh, difference is the fact that his team could take advantage of early game kills, right? You have a Terra Blade. Every time you get a kill, that's a tower early on. So I really like this decision of not going drums and, and going for the blink because specifically that, that you have a Terra Blade. So I'm going to look towards them kind of comboing up uh, in about a couple of minutes. And this is what we were sort of talking about during the draft. You have this heavy tempo coming in from LGD and sort of the thing that Draskal was alluding to that if we do end up getting a hell of an item advantage early on is they're going to go here onto this Ember Spear, pull it back in. They're trying to TP in the, end, the Earthshaker, but he doesn't have six yet. It's going to throw out the Fissure. Not going to block in old 11. Still a battle of ruin. Yao is there as well. They brought in the Terra Blade. Almost out of mana right now. The OD, he does not have his ulti either, so can't really Hux do much too. outside of throwing out a couple of his Astrals. 11 is going to die. A big 2 for Centauran, and now Ame trying to get into their face, trying to bring him down. They've been able to catch now on the break. He's going to take a hell of a lot of damage. They end up bringing him back with the X, and that's the OD dead as well. A double kill for Ame at this early stage. And as you alluded to, potentially a tower. Ember might not even be able to get out of here as well. They're actually bringing in Slarder now. The quick jaunt away does mean that maybe is at least for the moment going to escape. Yeah, I think the respawn time is a little bit too, too short here for LGD to get anything out of that victory. Oh, that was... I think Quite that's when you off. question mark. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, we might be, because there is a, a couple of animation frames missing, right? We might be seeing that's true. some sort of Kale, so maybe it was closer than it looked. Fair enough. But, uh, yeah, I expect that the terribly rotation to come a couple minutes later, uh, because those kills weren't, like, they, they did get the kills, but it, weren't it wasn't super clean, so unfortunately they weren't able to get too much tower damage off of it. But still, that's kind of the idea of the early LGD aggression. Use your low cooldown spells, get kills, and then pop the metamorphosis for towers. And Puck building towards the... Well, it looks like Treads. Curious if he thinks about even just going into like, I don't know, I, I guess you could go for an early Veil here if you wanted. I don't know if it makes the biggest difference in the world. Yeah, I think the early Treads is very curious, because normally if you want stats, your double no talisman plus the Veil. Uh, that it builds into it just gives you pretty much all the stats you need. Uh, and if you want to go for an early game uh, boots upgrade, most Puck just skips it for the bottom or for for the blink. So I, I find this very curious. Oh, Kunkka level four. It looks like have they actually purchased the tome yet? Daz is level five, so that makes me think that they actually gave it to him, which is a little bit curious. But Bad has been. Slardar going to be controlled, going to be caught. They have a fissure. They're coming in with the Ember. They throw down the Echo. That's going to be Kunkka dropping down and dead. And old 11 just going to have to bounce out of there before things end up turning even worse for him. Don't fight near the Shrine, guys. Yeah. This is one of the rare cases where you pick up the Blink before he even has access into Lasso. So that looked a little bit awkward there. I thought Old Eleven was going to take over the fight, but he's level 7. He doesn't even have Lasso skilled yet. So they didn't actually have the Tome yet there for Kunkka, and now he's holding on to it. I guess, is he bringing that out for somebody else? Is he going to give that to maybe? No, not like this. What? Don't okay. Do you give him the ward. I mean, there's there's one thing to make your mid player to feel good, but Kunkka needs 6. Maybe he's holding on to it and it's going to pop it right before a fight. That's the dream. They drop down the Warlock ulti. Going to connect here. The Sunder at level 9 for Ame trying to walk away. And it looks like they are going to be fine for the moment. They're still Fatal Bonded up. But now in the area, they won't be able to make any use off the back of that Golem, I don't believe. Yeah. So the reason to not pop the uh, book right now for the Kunkka is that let's say he uses it now and he dies. Dying as a level 5 hero is cost more costly than dying as a level 4. So. There's no big difference between 4 or 5 anyways. He'll pop it if it brings him to 6. 
uh, or if he needs to use it during a fight. Okay. Just a slight, small efficiency kind of thing. Not a big deal. Min Maxon from Victoria. The ultimate of it. This is going to be an invis rune. In some ways, be one of the biggest kill runes that you could get right now as a puck. Level 10. See if he can make use of it as he will run into the Ember Spirit in the jungle and spot him out. Not using that invis yet. And now he's going to head back mid. It looks like they might think about getting aggressive here with the Blink Dagger done and now level 6 online for Kunkka. This would be a big win for them if they could find somebody of value. And, well, wrong is okay. And now the OD there as well. They jump forward. They've been able to catch on to him. The Fissure, they're pulling him back in. Boat is going to connect as well as the Dream Coil. And now the OD in a hell of a lot of trouble. They're going to be able to kill him off. Slardar is in the area as well. He might just feed his life away if he's not careful as they take down another. Maybe killing off wrong. Killing off right. And now looking for more. The Silence on the two. Able to interrupt before that stun came out. They're chasing Dark. And Earthshaker, nowhere left to go. He can pop the shrine if he wants, but I don't think that it's going to end up doing anything for him. Yeah, he's going to get this kill. It's going to be uh, still alive for a little bit longer, but will go down. Well, as the end of the draft was asking you guys, asking who do I think you know is going to win this game, I said it's going to be coming down to the mid player's performance. Right there, maybe. Just did everything that he needed to do and then some more. That last waning rift preventing the slaughter from coming in to get that three man crush was key to actually get the other kill. Meanwhile, during all of that chaos, Terra Blade does what Terra Blade does best and just takes down the mid tower. So, if you ask if LGD is happy with their current game plan, yes, they are. This is what their lineup is designed to do and they're doing it pretty much flawlessly. I guess the big question mark is going to be how much can they take before this OD comes online? In that last fight, he wasn't really able to be very effective immediately getting lassoed. He's going for the four staff and is going to have it completed now. Yeah. But he needs to probably build into, what do you think? Do you think you need to go fully into the Blink Dagger at the next stage or Hurricane Pike after treads? It seems like he wants to just stats up a little bit more, power treads, and then Hurricane Pike, and then into Blink. Um, Hold that thought here as uh, ZZZ might be... Nah, he's fine. They're 25 away, man away from Lasso. I mean, so you say OD comes online, right? But to me, that's like kind of air quotes because I think traditionally OD likes to actually fit a Hannah Midas into the build to kind of really go hard into the mid game. But because of the very strong aggression coming out of LGD right now, yeah, he has a four staff. He could kind of fight right now, but really this is not going to be the, the mid game dominance that we normally expect out of an OD. Well, there might just be another kill here in a second. They end up using the X bottle trick with the XTP and 11 jumping forward. The rest of the team is here. The jump forward, the crush onto three. The boat, the block is gonna come down as well. Yell manages to get that grave off on himself and now old 11 pull back in, maybe with the turnaround. He gets the silence off. Do they have the follow-up damage though? Old 11 barely staying alive through this one. Slaughter is not with the rest of the team, but he's gonna have another blink crush in a second. It looks like he's just gonna have to call it off though. There's too much damage from all of these heroes. He doesn't get old 11 trying to run away. They are gonna be able to get out of there for the moment. The fatal bonds, not enough to tick down old 11 as of yet. He can go for the XTP away if he wants to and just get healed all the way back up to full. Looks like he's gonna walk home, but a great fight there for LGD. Yeah, to me that is, uh, they even missed the initiation combo on the Ember Spirit. Ember Spirit was able to dodge away from the, uh, I believe the bolt, right? And then yeah. Puck just tracked him down and got the kill. That was a very strong, strong early showing of the Blink Dagger from Slaughter. That surprised me how early he was able to get it. This is a four position Slaughter being able to pick up a Blink Dagger for a 15 minute fight. That's crazy for him from Eloquent. Despite hitting a very good crush, his team just doesn't have what it takes to actually win that team fight. Um, and the rest was history. LGD wins yet another big one. They were up 7k net worth lead in 16 minutes. That's crazy. This is the power of this type of draft, the run at you stuff. Even from the very beginning, we said that it was going to be a possibility. And that Terrorblade pick working out very well. And I think that there was a panel that I was on the other day where we were talking about Terrorblade and that we haven't seen him all that often recently. And I mean, this is showing the hero is certainly can fit within the current meta. I think one, one aspect of this is though, it, right now LG is making it look much easier than it actually is. Because if you mess up one of these timing where you go into a, a gank slash tower push and you fail, 
Yeah. Terrible loses a lot of his steam, so LGD is making it look easy because they're kind of good at this game. But <laughs> there's a lot of times that the, these kind of lineup just doesn't work. So maybe that's why we don't see it as frequently as uh, as we used to. Yeah. I love that, by the way. LGD is kind of good at this game. I agree. I mean, they're not at TI yet. So. <laughs> that's fair enough. Yeah. All right, LGD, they're going to make that move up towards the north. See if they can find any of these heroes as it looks like Ehome Keen has set up Ember. In the All 11 is really back. far away from his team right now, so. And they're wrapping around though, and this is going to be big. They, they have the Remnant worn off now, so he doesn't have anywhere left to go. They're going to find the Warlock at the start, still 15 seconds away from his ulti, and there's maybe. He breaks the TP away that was coming out from CCC, and he's going to be brought down in just a second. Oh man, that is rough, and now. With Metamorphosis popped, another What's tower. Stop him! Yeah, another kill, another tower. That is the uh, rinse and repeat game plan. Although he's not gonna go for it. Where is he actually walking towards to? I'm not sure. All right. He does have Mantis out being delivered as well. See, this is the thing. <laughs> this is what always freaks me out about all GD. They have these great timing pushes, and then for some reason they don't decide to go fully forward for it. Warlock ult's back on. Maybe yeah. That's why they feel like, okay, look, we want to fight, but. Let's pump our brakes a little bit. Uh, we are somewhat further away from the tier two. Bleak Dagger reveal. There it is, mid lane. They found maybe. They're taking him down, but no, he gets a phase shift off. They're able to turn it back around. How does that happen? And now Dark, he's going to end up being brought back in, killed off in just a second here, most likely, uh, unless he's able to get out of there. No. Okay. Ah, yeah, they got him. Maybe he's not going to let him run. Like. Oh, that, that would have been such a big kill. And huh? now, old 11, he's just going to find another kill on Ember. The wheels are falling off. How they does do he solo find a kill around, an Ember spirit as a Batrider without lasso? Yeah. What? Old 11. He's a god. All right. The, the true E-god, I guess. Is it old god? Is that what we say? Or, <laughs> or E-god? <laughs> I guess there's more than a few olds, though. That's yeah. the problem. Are there any other E-Gods, though? Is Envy on that list of E-Gods? No comment. No comment. Well, Maybe. he is a Sama, so I, I, I suppose uh, that qualifies. All right, back to this game. E-Home needs to break the momentum. They do have everything that they need to actually win a fight. No Echo Slam, but uh, the key, uh, key parts of the fight is the Rock, the Fatal Bonds, and the Blink Crush. So if they catch LGD kind of with pants down, they can just win a fight and, and get a tower, but it seems like LGD is just one step ahead. They know this is happening. Yeah, and they're walking uphill in towards the shrine. They're actually just going to drop a ward there. This is traditionally a very scary place to fight, but if they have all the vision in the world, they're going to... Uh, I thought that they might turn around and go back onto Ame, but it's a smoke then instead, and maybe Ehome Keen are going to be the ones that get caught. LGD also moving forward. It's a four staff done for old 11. So pulling somebody out of position at the start of this one is definitely what they're looking to do. And well, heading over. Yeah, they break the smoke on the tower, but they can't find anybody, at least yet. Right now, they don't have vision from E Home of anybody in the area, but they might be expecting this. And honestly, if you find a kill right here, if you find a big pickoff, Ame can tear through even a tier three tower if they're not careful. There's the, the Ember Spirit count. Walking forward, they have the lasso, the four staff as well. Do they want to go on him? They don't want to. They don't want to blink in the bat and get blink crush and get rock. That is a. That's how you lose uh, your momentum as a bat rider. So he's like, look, my terror play is hitting the building. He's thinking about it now, though. And there's the jump forward. He's going to be able to pull back in another. The OD, the bigger target, but they get the disarm. There's the rock onto two. The boat is going to come in. So all that damage mitigation, they're able to walk away on that Ember Spirit. Still a lot of damage being dealt on the wrong. And the tower, the Echo Slam turn around with the Fatal Bonds. Is it going to be enough dark? He's still going to get blown up here, but maybe with OD in the area, can they bring the rest of them down? Doesn't look like it as of yet. Everybody gone. Oops. LGD. Oops. Destroyed E Home Keen. That was a terrible Echo Slam. I mean, it hit a lot of heroes, but he used them as his whole team was backing off because his whole team took a vote and they had to back off. How do you hit a four man Echo but still be bad at it? That's how. Because you gotta communicate with the team, and like you said, you got a terrible, you win a team fight. That's Rex at 21 minutes. Man. Am Sanity. I being a little bit harsh there? 
I don't know. I don't know. It, it, again, it's like it's one of those things where you it looks like it is so good, but the end result ends up not being so good. And really, to me, it feels like it's more not everybody on the same page than, you know, maybe that is a bad end of play. I'm not sure. It's hard to call it. But the biggest thing for me is that, like you said, E. Home Keen down a lane of racks this early. The Terrorblade lineup has done what it was meant to do. And the only thing that's left really at this point is going in for Roshan and cleaning up the rest of these tier twos. Get tier twos, go high ground. I mean, there's a BKB on Terra Blade with the Mantis out finish. <laughs> My goodness. He's almost doubled up on OD's net worth. I, I, I don't know uh, how E Home Key could make a comeback. I think Blink Dagger helps a lot on uh, Fluorescent if he could finish it on OD. But And, and the play there is to so like Blink in the front to. Use the Hurricane Pike to push back a hero, get a whole bunch of in stacked up, kind of sort of slow down slash defend your towers that way. Yeah. But he needs to get BKB because a Koyo means he's dead. That's or a lasso story. means he's dead. Like they, they, they're just an item behind. That's really what it comes down to. It's yeah. 16,000 net worth lead right now for LGD. And while OD definitely counters Terrorblade in the later stages if they were able to get it, like you mentioned, there's no Midas on this OD. He's not going to be scaling as well as he needs to, and he's also not going to be getting the levels that he needs to. Uh, he's still two levels behind both that Puck and the Terrorblade. Shaker, going to get caught here on the bottom side. Ended up being able to find him yet again. The silence comes out. Dark hits the ground. LGD looking strong after a 2-0 for their previous opponents, Vici Gaming. I think the other thing that's really cool about this draft is the Kunkka maintaining that momentum early, the XTP combos to make sure that the rest of your team is on constantly on the map, either farming or pushing or fighting, whatever they have to do. Yep. It's been really good for them. It's a, it's a very nice addition to a push strat because during the middle of your push, you, know, you, you send something back and you juice up. It's like having a buyback. Especially if they commit all of it onto one hero and uh -oh. X. Oh no, that, he's already used his force staff as well. They're pulling him back in. Boat's gonna connect. A ton of damage. The Warlock will be used defensively outside of the base. And they are still going to lose that OD. And now they're gonna end up losing even more. Yule Scepter keeping that Ember Spirit alive for the moment. Can he actually play his way out of this one? The Fissure is there as well, just trying to block it off. Doesn't actually connect onto any of them. And the buyback from OD, I don't even know if that's going to be enough to stop him. They're, they're continuing to just run at Ehome Keen. They don't have an answer right now. LGD just bullying them around, but maybe. Well, as they end up being able to take them down here. Ame is still in okay place. He still got BKB, he just popped a Manta, and now Eloquent inside a tree. He's not looking so eloquent right now. It's gonna just get punched down by all of these illusions. That was a buyback. That was their final hold, essentially, in this game for Ehome. And I think uh, a GG is coming out very, very soon. Well, maybe not, because LG is gonna back off for now and take a couple of shrines, perhaps wait for, wait for the next Roche. I mean, yeah, that's the thing, right? Is that Roche is here. Like, they can go in and take this right now because there isn't a, a rock they ended up using that one. Yep. Uh, they maybe have to be a little bit careful about Sandy's Eclipse and Echo Slam. That might be the only thing. Yep, they keep doing the X uh, TP back home thing. Eleven's back with full mana. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tough one for you, Home Keen, but... We've seen uh, games with bigger leads uh, being thrown before. Like, just a game, one game ago, you know, Vichy Gaming had a huge lead against LGD. And more specifically, this LG Demon, LGD team in particular has thrown away a number of leads. For sure, for sure. But I, 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 I want to say this lead is bigger than the one that right. Vichy had against them. Like, that's the thing, is that... Uh, also, they've not gotten through a bunch of qualifiers. They've been knocked out early, but this is the one that really, truly matters. Getting in for TI and just winning one best of three ends up getting oh, them man. there. The way you say it like that just makes me feel sad because uh, it's it's like Clutch Gamer, but the opposite, right? I know. That's yeah. the thing. Clutch Gamer qualifies to everything, but the one that you know really means a lot. Well, and, and, and I mean, that's... I, I, I was talking about this a little bit here, but you look at all these teams that uh, play their hearts out, and when you're watching from far away, it's easy to not think about it too much, but then when you actually see the players in person at events or this whatever, This is their career on the line. It could be totally. for some of these players. You know, who knows what happens next year, so. 
All right, LGD looking to try and secure themselves oh, a, a spot at least for the first one. Jumps forward, they catch, they pull him back in, breaking the coil. The stun is there, OD is dead. Soon to be wrong, they throw out an Echo Slam for all it's worth, but it's not enough. The boat, the damage mitigation, they're gonna take down wrong as well. They don't have an answer. He's just standing there accepting his fate. And with the Ember soon to fall down as well, the silence, the right clicks, the Yules, good game is called, and LGD one away from Seattle. Very impressive showing for from LGD. Uh, I love the item choice for O11, going for the blink instead of the drums. I kind of mentioned that in game, but to me, the, the standout player had to be maybe, and he delivered, right? Like I talked about how important his role, roles are. He needed to initiate, he needed to make sure he get off Raining Rift either against Slaughter or the Ember or the Warlock, and he did that fight after fight after fight. So he, he was involved in every kill. He was eight and f eight, one and 14. They had 26 kills. He had a perfect game, uh, except he fed first blood to mid <laughs> when he was going for it. <laughs> but uh, still like yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe just like outclass uh, E-Home King. We'll have to Good see stuff. what ends up happening in game number two. I mean, Lumi, this felt like it was sort of decided in the draft to a large extent. No, I, I think, think the draft so? was very even. If I felt like OD was able to accelerate ahead, uh, if Puck didn't have a good game, I could see okay. this game going very lopsided in the other direction. Okay. I Because I the team fight's crazy, right, from Ehome Keen. Yeah. Yeah. They, they had what it takes from the drafting perspective, but the, the outplay was real. Okay. We'll have to see if we continue to see creeps pulled in from the off lane to <laughs> mid, a donation to maybe to make sure that they can carry him through this game. Uh, but we'll be back for game number two, the final series of the TI7 qualifiers, China region. We'll be back in a few.